you like to take a moment to make a public comment and introduce yourself? Sure. Can I ask questions or is this basically public? It's more public comment. Okay. We um, can always, if you know, because we have a pretty packed agenda, um, we if, if we don't have time to address any of your comments, then we can always put you on an agenda in a future meeting. Okay. Uh, my name is Ken Nyman, N E I M A N. I'm at 329 Prospect Street. Um, I was in <coughs> touch with Rich. I, I mean, two months ago when I saw all the trees around town and the signs and I was interested possibly in having a couple of trees to put into the tree belt in front of uh, my wife and my house. Um, and um, he gave me a copy of the uh, brochure, which is incredibly thorough and impressive. Uh, and then he suggested that uh, possibly there's this uh, neighborhood tree planting program and then I got in touch with neighbors and, and see uh, if they're interested. Uh, so I did that. The only mistake I made is I went door to door. I forgot to get their email addresses. So I'll have to start over again at some point. But just to tell you, I went from Prospect Avenue to Jackson Street. Uh, there are about 17 houses in that. Um, along there, and I would say about 12 people, I haven't been able to contact three or so, but 12 people are interested wow. in participating in one way or the other, or at least learning more about the, the program. I explained it to them as best uh, I could. Um, and uh, so I, I came here because I, I, I was an email with Rich and then Lily uh, as well, and you indicated to me that it wasn't on the agenda, not that I was wanting to be on the agenda. I was coming to find out more about the tree planting program. Um, and so I thought I would just put two cents in for our, our Prospect Street. Cross, it's basically across from uh, Child's Park, that entire uh, area there. It would look nice there. I, I see um, so sort of a sub-gateway to the city coming uh, down that way. And it's kind of empty. Uh, 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 on a variety of homes there. Some, I'm not sure it would be appropriate to have trees in the tree belt, but uh, we can find, uh, find that out. I would just like to know uh, at some point how long it might be before, do I need to keep on checking the website to see this the application for the uh, neighborhood tree planting program, or can you send it, something to me when, it, when the uh, application comes out, and I'll be in touch with uh, people. Um, and just want to make sure one of the uh, one of the uh, homes already has a couple of tree stands at number three seventy one Prospect Street. I don't want this the application if we have one from the neighborhood to delay. They're getting their tree. Mm -hmm. and they've been waiting for a long time. So uh, okay. <laughs> so I just I don't want to interfere in that. They, uh, uh, but I, I spoke with them the other day. Um, and I know they're dealing with rich about uh, choice of uh, trees. So I think it's a great program, and uh, be happy to uh, work with the commission and uh, try to coordinate things with the neighborhood as things go along. And I'll, I'll need at some point copies of the pamphlets so I can hand it out to people and they can uh, learn more about it. Uh, and by pamphlets, you mean the this tree? This is a big thing. Oh, I see. Yeah, we have that in a PDF version. Oh, okay. Tell and get the emails the second time. Uh, That's basically it. Uh, great. Uh, Thank you for coming by. Okay. Um, just a quick answer to your question. You're you're definitely in the system, so when, when this is live online, we'll, yeah. we'll let you know, and you're welcome to apply. And, um, you know, like I said, I offered to handhold you through the application process if you need help. There's lots of people around the table who would be who will be support for whatever neighborhood is chosen for the next year to be and um you know it's not like we've got a big lineup of people hello oh, this is one of my neighbors oh it's yes. one of your neighbors yeah okay uh, um this is chris o'leary oh hi chris he's at 337. Yes. okay so yes yeah. generally we're talking about next spring that? we're talking about next fall would be the plan it's always going to be a fall plan all right yep next one. yep great
Well, um, you know, forgive us that we can't engage in a conversation about your particular project right now, but, um, you know, you did, you did a good thing by coming by and introducing yourself. And as I also mentioned in the email, at 5.30 on the agenda, we're going to be talking about the pilot project we're doing this fall. So if you want to stick around for that, you're welcome to, um, but it's, you know, almost an hour away. So, um, <laughs> I've been known to speak fast. I've been known to speak very fast and to push people along. So, don't, you know, don't give me a, an opportunity. <laughs> Okay, great. Perfect. Well, it's lovely having you and nice meeting you. And I think just a reassurance to um, these gentlemen and also other members of the public, but let's commit to put that on the agenda as kind of a Q&A session when we're ready to kind of launch the program officially, yeah. you know, with enough time for the neighborhoods to incorporate answers into the applications, et cetera, however we end up good idea. That, uh, it's a very good sprint. idea. Yep. Okay. That could be part of a press release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. a question? No, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, I want to just so long. It's public comment period, mm -hmm. so we're gonna um, we're gonna we're gonna keep going, um, but during you know during the time when we discuss it on the agenda, yeah, that might be an appropriate time. Okay. So um, we have minutes from the last uh, meeting <coughs> that we need to approve. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> new new sheriff in town. <laughs> Whoa, uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna read this right now, right? Yes, speed read. read. Now that we know that these are very lengthy minutes, we're going to ask that we read them ahead of time in future meetings. <laughs> Give an extra copy of this. in mind that um, really the most important things in this is decision points. So if, if, if there are things that you have to be voted on, that's that's the most seminal stuff.
Okay, we need a motion to accept the minutes. And then a quick, uh, on, under the to-do list in the back, under my name, uh, it says, we we'll need to put bridge on hardscape removal, blah, blah, blah. She also will work on documenting tree growth and nursery stock. It's really making a document regarding nursery stock and explaining types of production systems, maybe. This would be a sheet like recommending here's the different types of nursery stock you can buy and what well, you know. Okay, so can we change that to we'll good, work better, on best. a document regarding nursery stock? Pardon? Me? Can we change that to we'll work on a document regarding yeah, nursery stock? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just to be put into the put in, into the tree guide, you know, kind of what we figured out about which okay. types of production systems are best. No, I haven't had a motion. Oh, I'll move. Do we need a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Aye. Abstain. Okay. All right. Can I make a, just a quick recommendation on the notes? Um, I definitely appreciate the detail. Is it, is it possible maybe to, to bullet point um, instead of having a big blocky? It might, might be a little bit easier to read. No, I like them a lot. Yeah. It makes a lot of detail. I'm not saying eliminate. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying just reformat. Yeah. I like the detail too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. 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 I'm more in favor of streamlining um, minutes that, are, that really capture the seminal decision points. Um, I think detail is, I think it's kind of up to us to capture the detail, and we also have the video. So I find, I find it a little, um, I mean, it's very, very meticulously and diligently done, and I appreciate the work that went into it. I find it a little overwhelming. So it's not less detail. I would like less detail, personally speaking. Um, okay, so um, chair report. So there are two meetings coming up that are relevant to our commission. Um, one is next Tuesday on the 25th at 6.30 p.m. King Street um, Department of Transportation is, is done a redesign of a portion of King Street and that hearing um, presenting the 25% um, what do you call it? Design. The design, 25% design is happening, is happening on that day. I would love for someone to be there, or at least for us to make some kind of comment about the importance of trees. It looks like trees are in the design. Mm -hmm. Trees are in the design, although they're not listed as part of the project overview. Okay, so that could be a recommendation. I can be there. You can? Oh, wonderful. Okay, and then the following Tuesday um, is the meeting about the downtown redesign. That, so one is 925 and one is 102. And that one is also completely and totally relevant to our mission because it has to do with us eliminating the heat island effect there and making it a more walkable, you know, pestering from from space. Um, can anyone go to either one of those? That one on October second. That's the one you're planning yeah. on going to. The um, did you say September twenty fifth with the DOT? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what time is it? It's 6.30. Um, I just today forwarded oh, the informational email. Yeah, I read it and I, I went through it. It's my neighborhood. I didn't understand right. some of it. That's right. It's your neighborhood. So that's yeah. all more relevant for you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and maybe since Todd had a comment about it, if you want you to want to connect about maybe recommendation. Sure. Thank you. All right. And Marilyn's going to go to the 10 one. Yep. Can anyone else go to the one on downtown? I probably can go to that one. I'm going to try the original one. And then this, the sister to that is the 30 inch ones. Oh, right. That's right. That the just came. 10 to 30? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, is that a, oh. also a Tuesday? Wow. What day of the week is that? Do you know? Uh, 
So it's Florence downtown redesign. It's a Wednesday, the 10th. October 10th? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said the 30th. Oh, is it 9? Oh, no, no, no. 10 30. I'm sorry. It's Tuesday. I, I got the 10th mixed oh, up. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think it's a red one. It's red, that way. So the sonic tomography just basically confirmed what we got. I found in the field that the tree does have a pocket of decay in it. And it has actually a lot of, uh, has some root decay on the tension side of the tree, which is the side of the tree that faces the neighbor's houses. So there's a lot of weight over the roadway because the majority of the tree is over. So the question is, is that what are we going to do with it at this point? And I have to have a conversation with the mayor about it because I think that we should probably entertain having a public shade tree here to remove it. I'm not super comfortable with the diagnostics that came back. And given, given where the load is and everything on the tree, I mean, I don't know that it's going to fail. And it's not going to fail eminently, but there is potential for so, and if we decide to go ahead and leave the tree and just cut the roots, then we know that we're just basically going to end up really killing the tree. So, and I'm Hinkley still Street, Hinkley Street, number 25 Hinkley Street. It's yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge joke. Um, and I'm still waiting for the results to come back from Barrett Place, which has very, two very large oaks that have uh, issues as well. Quickly, they've decided to. I'm actually going to be moving and running another division. It's going to be the Forestry Parks and Cemetery. So I will be moving back to Spring Grove Cemetery with the tree crew and all the equipment and everything at some point. I'll probably, I would say by, by Thanksgiving. And there'll be another. There'll be another highway superintendent who will just do the highway duties, which is black top sidewalk, roadways. So, so it's moving along. Putting an office together. It's taking a lot of Oh, one thing. Congratulations. I say, yes, thank you. Uh, less work with uh, the same title. Interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. The kid help you fill it? Uh, I, I, forwarded you, I forwarded all of you an email just a few minutes ago. So um, the city is undertaking a uh, um, tree removal project at the South Street. Uh, drop structure, which is the bridge that goes from South Street by the OK lanes mm -hmm. that goes across to the other uh, to uh, Earl Street. Mm -hmm. On both sides of that, there's a dam underneath there, mm -hmm. kind of a drop drop structure. There are massive trees that are on either side of that drop structure that have to be removed as part of our maintenance, our requirement for the Army Corps of Engineer. None of the trees are public shade trees. So I gave you the information, there's an actual letter there that outlines it with a cutting diagram. So in case you have any residents that call, you have information to speak to them, or you can just forward the information to me. It's gonna start probably in the beginning of October, sometime after October 2nd. Since I live in that neighborhood, and I know Jen does too, um, could you, um, I, I'll, I can forward it to my neighborhood lister to yep. just get in front of it and yep. say, FYI, this is this is not something that um, the Tree Commission has any jurisdiction. In fact, the city of Northampton doesn't even have any That's jurisdiction correct. over it. It's required by the, the Army Corps of Engineers. So, yep. yeah, I'll um, I'll make a note to myself to forward that to. In order, so in order to maintain our our, uh, our Army Corps standing on our flood control mm -hmm. uh, system, our, our levee system, and it's been most so, okay. you know, the impact now is going to be large because you're cutting down a lot of large shade, a lot of lar large trees. <clears throat> okay. So. I have to do Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Todd. Okay. Um, so, I've already seen the changes that the planning department made to the significant tree ordinance as a result of our comments. I think most of our comments were incorporated in some form or another. Uh, they have made, um, so this is um, making significant trees that are removed uh, to build up to 10,000 square feet of a net zero building um, exempt from the significant tree ordinance uh, replacement um, criteria. Um, they did incorporate the change to make uh, it approved by the planning board, so it's part of the review process. So it'll be a, uh, a like a tree-specific uh, decision. Um, the language was 
tightened up a little bit to cap it at a 10,000 square foot building and or aggregate of buildings. Um, the, I mean, if I was the lawyer, I'd have a couple thoughts on this. Uh, they're asking for a building permit uh, issued for the structure. However, this is all for a site plan, so I don't know how you get a building permit before you get a site plan, but I leave that to the powers of date. Um, and the replacement criteria um, has been cleaned up. Our uh, tree list planting guideline is now referenced. Uh, coniferous trees have been added. Um, and then on the ordinance side, uh, it's much better language on the existing uh, landscape plan, uh, which calls for um, an inventory of any significant tree over 20 uh, DBH by an arborist. Um, and it also calls for an inventory of trees on abutting properties if the root zones of said trees cross onto the subject parcel. Um, so that I think is all positive changes to that. So it's not critical root zone areas, it's just root zone? I thought the original draft had critical root zone areas. I don't, well the original draft didn't have that bullet at all. Was, I saw another sheet that it said critical root zone. I might have used the words critical, but okay. they... The rooting zones, that goes way out. <laughs> well, that's a pretty broad... Hey, uh, wait, if it gives the tree more protection, then who are we to complain? Well, and I don't know if the ordinance has that, I mean, defined, part of mm -hmm. the ordinance writing is defining what you write. Uh-huh, oh, got it. Mm -hmm. So I just have a quick question about, so so the zero, net zero, so somebody complies with all the various 10,000 square feet, whatever, whatever, and it's really about being, if there are significant trees there, that will interfere Block with solar. solar. Right. But just if you want to build 10,000 square feet that's not set net zero, you can't just cut down significant trees, is that? Right, it has to be for a, for the specific construction of a net, net zero, zero oh, yeah. structure. Okay. Okay. Is so it so more than, or 10,000 or more? Less. But 10,000 or less. Yeah. Okay, so thanks. If it's more, it's the, you're not exempt from the significant tree. Is, it, is this a can of worms we need to worry about as more and more construction moves to net zero that we're going to start to lose significant shade trees? Uh, possibly. I mean, it, it is. Uh, I, I'm pleased that it at least references the role of the planning board to review this on a site specific basis. I think that's positive. Um, 10,000 square feet, I mean, that gets you five houses, a modest size. Um, so, I mean, you could potentially wipe out significant trees on a subdivision corner. Is this just at the point when the house is being built, for example? I assume the answer is yes, right? This is just applying to when the house is being built. As opposed to, say, 20 years later, let's say when the house is being built, there's some small trees that aren't logged in the solar, but then they grow up, and if people want to cut them then, well, cutting them at that time would not trigger the significant tree ordinance unless it was a specific a special permit condition that those trees remain. So it's on private property, there's no protection of that. Public trees might grow up, and they might be a contract, and they might be anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere in the city where the plant would be made. Yeah. So are you recommending that we um, we vote to accept these changes? Uh, to the extent requested by the mayor, I think it would be appropriate for us to, to probably vote in that direction. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions? Are there any points that we discussed at previous meeting that or included, or has everything been included? The, the, only, the only one was uh, I recommended uh, either tightening the definition of uh, net zero energy building or tying it to one or several certification, uh, mm -hmm. official certification, and that, that wasn't done. Um, you know, I think the definition section of this ordinance probably needs to be updated based on some of these changes. 
can you make that recommendation? You know, like, can we do a qualified recommendation? Because I agree, I, 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 I think I saw the retort that LED is actually, uh, a LED certification is actually proprietary and therefore the city can't tie itself into that particular certification, at least that's what I think I remember was the explanation. Um, and yes. did I hear that from you? Yeah, I I thought, forward to the that email. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I do think that, you know, net zero, who knows how loose sequence, it could become like the word sustainable. Mm -hmm. It could become meaningless. Mm -hmm. um, so, so much depends on the opposite behavior too. Right, right. Um, so I think that if, if we're going to support this, I think that that seems to be a reasonable qualification is that they provide a lot greater detail about what it means, what net zero really means. Um, did you get the perfect limit? I think I think that was the intention. So did this alleviate that? I don't know. I don't know the details. Of it. No, they're operating under the existing standard entry ordinance. The habitat project. So yeah. That's that project with the site bounds approval. Oh, uh, it's already approved. So it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So would you be willing to craft some language about qualifying this, presuming that we're going to vote to support it? Okay, so now we need a motion. I can't make a motion as the chair. Can I just make one comment? That the one thing that Carolyn asked is that if the commission can make a motion, if the commission includes that motion, that they are a co-sponsor of this ordinance. The mayor would like the commission to be a co-sponsor. What does that mean exactly? Um, that, uh, so, in, so when the mayor makes the recommendation for the ordinance change, it goes in front of city council, it will go to a first, it will get read, and then the council will refer to the appropriate committees, and this will be one of them. We'll just come back here again. The mayor is looking to avoid doing that by sending, it, by having you be the co-sponsor. Then, it, because you've already vetted it, it doesn't have to come back here again. I'd like it to come back to us again. I'll tell you the truth. I, I appreciate his, you know, desire for for efficiency, but because there is still this big question of what net zero means. And it could be opening up a real wedge in the, in the strength of the significant tree ordinance. I would feel more comfortable if we had um, the opportunity to see what they come up with in the way of language. If we then, then my recommendation would be to do this, make a motion to effectively allow Todd to make the changes again and send it back to Carolyn to add the language about definition of net zero in a sense or however you however language you want to make it instead of actually because I this is this is the third time I think we'll go back because the mayor is anxious to get this completed. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel comfortable with the thought to um, ask them the language read the language. Right so the thing is, and so, 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 the, so the thing is, is if you do not if you just Power, make a motion to empower Todd to make recommended changes to the document. It goes back to the planning department. They review it. They have, she will have to go and meet with the mayor again. And she, the mayor will either accept the language or not. And then we'll come back here again for your review, and then you'll be asked to co-sponsor the document at that time. If you vote to co-sponsor the document and allow Todd to make the changes, the mayor decides he does not does not agree with the change of the planning board. The, you will not come back here again. You follow what I'm saying? So you have to. However, you vote depends upon whether you get to see it again or not. So is there? Um, you know, the mayor has been sort of fine line. You know, to, to balance. Um, we have a lot of support from the mayor. And you know, I don't have a particular opinion on this yet, but like in my mind, whether we should say, let's go, you know, with the initial recommendation or let's back off. But um, you know, I just think kind of politically whether it would behoove us to go along with the mayor. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Just because he's been so supportive financially, you know, in a lot of ways. I it I guess question would be, and I don't have an opinion on this, would, I'm just putting it out there on the table, would would it be, is this a battle that we want to pick, I 
guess. Well, I, it's my I, question. I think we, in the sense I get in the rooms, that we're, we're applying, applying the ordinance, except we don't know what next yes, means. means. And so all we're doing is giving up the review of this room of what that means and handing it to Todd and saying, let him be involved. Yes, the happens. only problem though is, as Rich mentioned, if, if Todd suggests some language, they reject it, will we have co-sponsored it? That's the question. And that's right. the part where we have to make a decision. And the mayor wants us to co-sponsor it so it expedi it makes it a, a faster finish, correct? Could, you, could, you could vote to co- oh, hey, tell me if I'm wrong, Rich. Could you vote to co-sponsor it conditioned on the definition net zero being crafted to an entire me satisfaction. Like Tom says. Mm -hmm. You could. You can make any motion you'd like. <laughs> so so the, so so the, you know so the, the, the thing is is that you know again we are advising the mayor as to what we would like to see happen. So the mayor does not necessarily have to take our advice and put email. Mm -hmm. So however you draft it, I mean I think I think that he's been pretty good and I agree with Jen. He's been very supportive of all of us in this room, plus the residents and plus this whole initiative. However, it doesn't hurt to ask questions because you really you really don't have um, this is the opportunity to ask those questions. So I mean you could you know you could draft something, I could give it to Carolyn and you know I was just actually wanted to see if uh, they actually had the definition of that actually yeah, it could be anywhere. Sorry. Instead of waiting for the next meeting? Not allowed. Yeah, no, that's violates the meeting law. There's a page of this that has a bunch of definitions, right? Well, it, the definitions could be anywhere in the code. It doesn't have to be just for oh, this yeah, ordinance. Right, it could be anywhere in the e code that could, you know, like I just looked up net zero and it goes zero lot line, living space, runoff coefficient, periodic reviews of ordinances, all because of the word zero. So. Okay. It would take me a while to find it, but I'm sure it's in here somewhere. I personally feel comfortable with the suggestion of um, making a motion conditional on, you know, Tad, Todd's satisfaction with the, but to co-sponsor conditional on Todd's satisfaction with the definition of net zero. And if that is not accepted, then I feel like we cross that bridge. I, when we get there, I, I appreciate, and I think the mayor knows that we got his back and he's got ours. So I don't think this is gonna sort of, break any relationship in a significant kind of way. I think if anything this just demonstrates that we care and that we're doing our due diligence and that um, we're thinking down the line, um, you know, not just at this one little project, which I think he's trying to move along, but the big picture and how this will impact trees in the future. So I see it as a good sign. I think the mayor would see it as a good sign. Yeah, I mean, the other thing too is that every recommendation that you've made so far has been incorporated. Yeah. With the right. exception of the, of the uh, using the word lead or some proprietary right. thing, but everything's been, so the mayor has given a lot of thought to this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so has Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how are folks feeling? Do we have a motion moving forward? And if so, someone's got to make that motion. Yeah, I'm going to move the co-sponsoring conditional on Todd finding language that he finds acceptable and finding net zero. Todd, do you feel okay about this? Sure. Okay. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Good. All right, moving right along. Um, a few days ago, I met with Molly Freilicher about this DCR Community Forestry Grant. Um, at the last uh, commission meeting, we had discussed applying for tree planting. And so I zoomed in on that aspect of the grant. There are other things, you know, like we got funded for an inventory. There are lots of things you can get funded for, but I think that we decided pretty quickly that we wanted to apply for tree planting because that's kind of what we're in the thick of. Um, I got a lot of very useful information, including the whole uh, grant proposal packet. Um, so let me just highlight a few of them, and then I'm going to talk. I'm going to hand it over to Molly and Marilyn a little bit to talk about 
the subcommittee meeting we had just after that to to plan for this. So I, you know, we can we can apply for a grant up to thirty thousand dollars. So it's not typical for communities to get full funding for tree planting. So if we go ahead and ask for that much money, we should probably segment our application um, into like higher priority and lower priority in case we only get partial grant. Um, I learned that, um, as you know, environmental justice grants, and that is um, grants where we plant in environmental justice zones have a different match formula. They have a 75-25 match as opposed to 50-50. And she um, forwarded me the EJ viewer for the state of Massachusetts, and I learned that one of the areas that we're highlighting right now, we're focusing on, which is a part of downtown, where if I had my laptop, which I forgot to bring today, I would um, highlight it, maybe Marilyn can pull it up, but is in an EJ zone. So that's really great, and so that makes me feel like a strategic plan would be to go for an area where we already want to plant trees, where we get a higher match. Um, and what else did she say? Downtown meeting. She Just said, um, so it's basically Main Street, so basically where we're sitting, so Main Street this way is all EJ because it's got McDonald's house, Salvo house, it's you know it's got the housing authority right yeah, on yeah. Fruit Street. It's you know and, and, and it actually all goes all the way up to South Street um, to the side Village Hill too. Side Street goes all the way to Village Hill. What? Um, and then it includes a little bit of the Ward Three off of Pleasant Street. So it's yeah. a, it's a nice fast zone. And so our recommendation, and I'm going to let them take get into the weeds, but our recommendation is that we focus on that zone for this grant. Very short time when we have to get a, a letter of intent in, October 1st, since today's the 19th. And we have to know what our budget is. We base, so we have to know how many trees we're planting, what our you know match is. It's, this is a really fast turnaround. So um, what I'm gonna suggest is that we get a few core people who have the time now until the 1st to dive deep into this and um, that the rest of the committee kind of empower them to, to do that deep dive and to, to get this grant application in. Um, Are you thinking about to do some hardscape changes? Yeah, so, so that was a question I had from Ollie. And what she said is that um, hardscape, the cost of hardscape removal is not covered, but it can be part of the match. But the cost of structural soil installation is covered. Yeah. So the removal is not. So anytime you're removing hardscape, like the late Rich's crew removing yeah. that hardscape, we can put that into the match part of the grant application, yeah. but the, it's not a reimbursable yeah, guide. We can fill in our portion. Yep. Got it. Um, but the good news, and this I had to kind of um, push them on because I don't think they've ever done this before, is that hiring a structural soil installer and actually um, putting in structural soil, mm -hmm. that is fundable. It is it's fundable. outright fundable. Good. It's part of the materials. So basically these grants pay for materials. They pay for trees, gotcha. mulch, um, you know, water bags, stakes, nice. but they don't pay for labor. Yes. So except for when you have hire an inst uh, like a special guy mm -hmm. to, to do this. So that was, I felt that was really promising news. I also learned that we can um, plant anywhere that is public space. So it doesn't have to be just, you know, on tree belts and so forth. It can be in parking lots. So I'm thinking we've already identified three in this area. Um, it can be in parks. It can be, it can be anywhere that is a public space. But it would not include setbacks. It does include setbacks oh, yes. too. Yes. Oh, wow. Setbacks are also part of it. The wow. only problem with setbacks is we have until October 1st to figure out roughly where these trees are going to go. So that doesn't mean we can't do setbacks, it just means that setbacks are probably not going to be part of this grant because unless we already have permission from folks, you know, in, in this zone. So, um, so I'm going to pass it on to Molly and Marilyn to talk about some of the streets we are prioritizing. One thing I will say is that the grant favors high visibility areas, and it also um, insists on an educational component to whatever we do. And that can be that could be signage, that could be involving school kids in planting or, or members of the public. And it could be um, you know a press release, a brochure, 
whatever, but they just want to see the benefits of it spread further than just the trees. So just for a visual, a real quick question. Yeah. So could it be, I'm not saying we should do this, but could it be possible that we could rate, get this grant to redo the parking lot at the, at the maple shops down there? Like well, that's, that's, what that's what we've been looking at. And Rich actually has some good news about that. Yeah, so I, Lily and I were talking yesterday, and uh, one of the things that came up, my thoughts were, is that I know that the city has been active in trying to uh, get uh, uh, some PV in some of these parking lots, actually yeah. on canopies, and so this parking lot is not one of those. Mm -hmm. Roundhouse is, mm -hmm. the police, I'm sorry, the fire station is, and mm -hmm. the James House lot or something at JFK. Mm -hmm. So we are, we have, basically we'll have free reign in this parking lot. Isn't that great? That mm -hmm. is a big heat island right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, those trees are all dying because they hit yeah. the limits yeah. of those uh, parking lots. So that parking lot, uh, um, a lot of the work would be removal of hardscape and building of hardscape. That part is not that the city has to pay. That's right. That would be our match. So right. we would provide the labor right. or we would pay for the labor for right. so a contractor right. to be our match. Because the there's going to have to be some redesign, probably, or even with some no. No. It's all a good question because I am not a structural soil installer, so I would I would hope that we'd be able to work within the parameters of the existing uh, parking areas. Um, but I I don't know that's something I have to wrap my hands around. With. So I mean I, I I think you can, and then one of the design models is okay. Here's your parking lot island where the trees are planted. Then you can actually cut out a little bit of the, um, Make of the channel. and you, no, you don't need it. You can just backfill. Like let's say you can give it an extra three feet uh, all around uh, it, and then just paint it yeah. back with regular yeah. pavement. Right. Oh. You, you can use a you know permeable pavement, but that's probably going to be. But you can make essentially make the parking lot islands bigger underneath the pavement. Underneath, underneath the pavement. Yeah. 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 So you got to. The trees you choose are, yeah. So it, 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 it won't be a huge number of trees. It will be a great demonstration. Right. right. So from my point of view, where it is, it's not so important as that it be a good demonstration so that people you know, can see it, it, it yeah. you know, visible. Yeah. And we can all learn from it. Yeah. 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 Demonstration. Yeah. 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 Hoping we can accomplish at today's meeting is buy in from the commission about um, some of the key areas in within this EJ zone that we'll focus on, and then to empower it can't be more than three of us on the commission because of the nature of forums and open meeting laws. Empower three of us to do a deep dive. One is going to have to work on writing the application, and two two others or all three are going to work on identifying the sites and um, you know getting getting all the details together um, given the, the shortness of time i think that's the only way we can accomplish this and i'm not able to do that because i'm under a work deadline so between now and the end of the month i can't do a deep dive so yeah. if you two do it it needs one more person right and we were actually thinking of you rob <laughs> Um, both because you've got the expertise on the ground and you're retiring enough time. <laughs> Although I have a tree planting. A lot of tree planting. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking that like strategic use of your time yes. might be better uh, working on this for, sh for yes. the short term. I think it's really kind of trying to understand where they go. I probably won't understand the contractual application of the Yeah, yeah. But checking the sites and seeing if they're actually appropriate. I'm trying to okay. match trees to sites. Yeah, we have to say which kind of trees we're going to plant. We have to, for the intent to apply, we have to give a broad, like, small, medium, and large kind of thing. And then for the application, I think we have to give, we want to submit our tree list as possible, and then, of course, call possible species and then qualify it with, you know, depending on what's available in the nursery. And they understand that. Like Molly gets that piece. So what's the maximum grant money for the state? What's their hurdle on the intent to apply? Like just 
just you know it's it's the face page of the application so the hurdle is um let me let me pull it up while lily's pulling that up just so everybody has a visual this is northampton um so the yellow is ej minority the dark green is minority and income level and the light green is just income so Where's the light green? That's the area we're talking about the south of things. Yeah, okay. and all we have to worry about is that it's it's any EJ area. Doesn't yeah. have to like fit Just all so you know what the different colors are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, any of those. And they judge them equally. So we're so what which was showing was the the enlarged version of okay. that section, uh -huh. which is what we were focusing on at our which meeting. encompasses a lot of places that we've yeah. planted actually on the saucer already. Right. Yeah. Right. But there but are there are plenty holes. of other places to plan. Yeah. Um, and the other thing too is that if we're going to say, for example, we get the maximum thirty thousand dollars, we match it with in-kind labor or monies from the mayor. I mean, if you end up having, for example, an installer actually who structure some of the parking lot, you know, your thirty thousand dollars is probably not going to cover that kind of work. So we have to cover touch. It won't cover a lot. It may cover some. So we have to just be, I guess. Uh, Dishes and how we decide what we're actually going to do and what we can actually cover. Yeah. And the question is, do we really smoke some small, small area like the parking lot to make a major impact, or do we actually branch out and do so? Something for you to think yeah. about. Well, do we actually do some of the other, like we talked about going right down Con Street and some other places of that nature? Uh, I mean, some of that is going to depend on what the price tag is per tree for an in, in, in installation with structural soil. Sure. So we're working out during. $300 a tree without the hardscaping rule for all materials and things. That's just a traditional. That's a traditional. What, what was the number? About 300 okay. So um, the, the intent to apply has to have um, the grant request, so how much we ask, how much we're going to match, uh, including the volunteer value. So obviously I'll need to be in conversation with Tree Northampton. And then the total cost of the project it needs a short project total title and a project sum. And then, of course, the grant, which is due a month later, is just a fleshed out version. So, so the matching part of this, if it's 25%, we're talking about 15, 10,000. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 grand. And so that will just disappear. Richie's time, Volunteers. Richie's crew, volunteers. Volunteer time, time for you too. Okay, so, so we have the matching. I don't think we'll have any trouble oh, getting to do that. Is that all? What's a volunteer driver? It could include car yeah. oh, So that's, that's equipment, you know, yeah. we monetize everything. And, uh, so Richard do that. Did you say, I thought you said the volunteer dollar hours were monetized at 11 hours. Rich is saying 24. So the Arbor Day Foundation doesn't tell the truth? Um, I just got this from Molly. So Molly just said $11 an hour. $11 an hour. So here's the difference. Skilled labor? It would be you, your crew, um, it would be installer, or um, for example, me when I write up the uh, accomplishments page at the end, that's $29 an hour, but unskilled. But we always have a leader like Jen. Well, Jen might, could, Jen be would be 20, any, would any be skilled. Oh, Anyone that's got like, you know, a more than a letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So right. most of Everything from 2017 was was recorded in quite a lot of detail uh -huh. for the Tree City USA. Oh, okay. Yeah. For volunteer, that's, that's I don't know if you need 18 hours, 2018. We're going to hit the match. Either. Well, we yeah. just, yeah, I mean, we're going to hit the match. Sure. I'm not worried about the numbers at all. I, I, I feel very confident about that. What I, you know, what I'm most interested in, in for the next 11 days is identifying where we're going to so I'm very interested in confining it to a small area because I'd like to find out how this works. And so if we're really going to do the structured soil, I mean, you could switch and do something else and spread it out. But as Richard's pointing out, it's not going to be that many trees. And so it's okay. We can always ask for another grant again. We can always, you know. Yeah, well, once we've done it once, it'll be easier for us to imagine getting money. Yeah. And people see it and then we can go to whatever try it. I mean, we're talking about hopefully five years. Yeah. Yeah. Every year. And so this would be maybe the first spot. Right. Is that what the way? I, 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 
Are there more tree wells in that than oh, yeah. five? Oh, yes. There's quite a few. Oh, there's more tree wells and there's more locations on the periphery of yeah. uh, the lot because of uh, yeah. there's some other things that have died, so they're not actually in the tree pits. I don't want to bite that. From there. So I'm just suggesting it's an addition. We might need to talk about five trees. Well, so I can envision, so I love the idea of geographically scoping way down, and we've got that parking lot, and I agree that the parking lot is just prime for a pilot of, of this new, new approach. But we also, that immediately around that parking lot, if you just look out the window, there's some really wonderful, you know, we talked about the Felix Lufkin Help Yourself Zone, then across the street is a beautiful tree belt. So we could intensely tree out that area, if if we're trying to find a way to stretch to the 30 ground. Right. But, 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 but if, if we're not. If we're not, we, we can still plant those. Anyway. anyway. This so, is true. This is true. So, so you know, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine it would be less than a couple thousand dollars per tree. So, we're not going to get a whole 30,000. So, 10, 10 trees is probably Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about other streets that? Well, now that we're having this discussion, I'm, I'm glad to know that that parking lot is included for lots of reasons. It's an extension of Pulaski Park. There's um, well, actually, the Brown no, no, no. Brown House one. Brown House is not. It's it's scoped for solar. We're talking about the one over there. Oh, Cross okay. Street. Okay. I just, we we said we saw around Brown House. Brown House. Brown House. Brown House. And, and how did we get to this park? You didn't use to be able to affect those. Those trees were at the parking department. They, they are, but I. this is one of the reasons after the actual, actual, actually after the federal intent is ready to go, I actually probably should, I think I'm going to email the mayor and let him know that we're actually acting in sequence grant so he has a heads up. Um, I talked to Chris Mason, the energy officer. I have not talked to David Pomerantz. He's the actual person that's service that's responsible for the parking lots and their maintenance. So uh, we have to have his buy in. Uh, and if he says go for it, great. If the mayor says go for it, then we have the green light. Um, I can't see why they wouldn't. I don't, there is no plan I'm aware of to renovate this parking lot. Um, it is configured, I think, to its maximum capacity. Uh, Roundhouse actually ended up losing a bunch of trees through, through more t uh, just through death. And then when they did that, they took out the actual tree the actual tree well areas and actually made them more parking spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're putting solar. Um, they're going to put solar canopies. Yeah. Canopy Similar canopy. to the one that was in Greenfield. If anyone has seen, right. I can't remember that. Yeah. Will that require removal of some trees? There are no trees. There are no trees. Oh, there are, there are a few trees. But the one thing I would just warn you: they are going to be taking down some of the trees in the back corner of the parking lot by the bridge because when they built Pulaski Park Phase Two. They took away multiple parking spaces, and they have to try to make those parking spaces up to a certain degree. Oh, okay. So actually, it will be a little bit of loss of shade tree over there. So this is kind of nice because we will be adding shade yeah. trees over here. So hopefully, we'll have a good effect. Well, on on the master spreadsheet, um, which is called Northampton Tree Planting Plan, which is on Google Drive, mm -hmm. we added yesterday an EJ tab. And um, so we have a running list of possible streets that we identified at yesterday's meeting. So if anybody wants to go in and review those and make any comments, um, I could read them now if we have time. Or, um, we are uh, or we're beh about 10 minutes behind on our okay. schedule. So I'm going to suggest, and um, you know, you, you can call me on this if I'm if I'm a little bit of um, steamrolling this, but I I am so aware that we have. So little time to do this. Um, what what I feel like we were coalescing around is the idea of prioritizing the Maplewood parking lot, and then if there's cream on the top, then we would consider other things close around that area that is also in the EJ zone. And if I could have buy-in from the committee that that is your blessing, then I feel like all of these like minor specifics. We can work out in a subcommittee, and um, it, and you could empower us to do that, and then we can get the grant application. Does that? How is that feeling for people? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's central, and then we radiate out from radiate out from there. Yeah. 
And I can't deep dive, but I'd be happy to like, if you, you know, yeah. if you be a resource to go walk with you or okay. whatever. Get, Great. You know. Have you already yeah. done a little structural soil investigation? As we talked about. Well, I have done some, not financially though. You know, I, I, I'm gonna, I'll talk to Rich at the end of the meeting. And see. Are we thinking 10,000? Three, we, have to do the we have no idea. We have no idea. Yeah, Rich is going to be working on that. Okay. All right. And he, and he had a quick message to the to the mayor is that this will provide a firm foundation for our going forward with our asking for capital one. Capital one. It's good call. Much more than about structural soil. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. The, the, the five year capital plan, we're just going to actually put numbers. We're going to put a five year capital plan together. I talked to Donna. It's another subject. And it's not covered, but we're going to put numbers in there and, and uh, increase. We're going to stay at the fifty thousand dollars a year, but then increase incrementally. But after we get through this project, we'll be able to actually adjust every single year for a capital request, so we could in future years, even though we're five years, we're at seventy thousand dollars. We can ask for different monies different times. Yeah. So. Okay, so just just to codify this, can we have someone make a motion? Motion. <laughs> <laughs> second motion. Motion exactly as you described. <laughs> Those were a lot of words I used. <laughs> Poor Beth. <laughs> let's be. Let's. Can you be a little more clear? Motion to focus the grant on the Maple Whatever parking lot uh, for the purpose of uh, maximizing uh, structural soil trees. And to authorize a group of three to um, pursue it. Mm -hmm. Probably nothing said. <laughs> no, it's hostile. All right, so I, oh, yeah, yeah. I and second. you still second it? Okay, great. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you everybody. Sorry, um, I didn't realize that we had that short of a timeline when I brought this up last commission meeting. All right, moving right along, and thanks for your patience, my members of the public. <laughs> We're finally getting to the part you care about. Um, almost. Actually, I might flip it, Todd. Sure. That's okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right, subcommittee reports, planting plan subcommittee. So this is where we're talking about um, the projects that we're going to initiate with neighborhoods. Actually, do you want to talk about where we are in the getting it online? Uh, Karen and I met uh, at the end of last week to talk about Tree Speak and the online application. She is working on both of them presently. Uh, they're not done yet, but there will be an online application. When it is, I will send you the email link so you can actually look at it and fill it out. Um, the problem is the Civic Plus, which is the city's uh, webmaster or web platform, has to should say approve or make sure that everything that we decide to do it can be done. This is the issue. Mm -hmm. That's why they're saying that you know, we can't have drop down pages mm -hmm. so things of that nature. So mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Karen's working on it. She's got a lot to do. But we're going to get it. I think the goal would be to have it up and running, I would hope, no later than November 1st. So that way, there, any, you know, it'd be better, it would be better for the sooner, but it would be nice at the latest one on the 1st. So neighborhood groups like the, uh, the one that you're representing and others actually have a chance to actually apply. Um, but I would definitely recommend that some of the, some of the neighbors, could, people that you have are interested actually should participate in the pilot plan on Orchard Street, as I mentioned in the email, um, just so they can actually get a feel of what is to be expected. Um, and, yep. just, and just come out and enjoy planting trees with some great folks. Yeah, and that's a good segue to um, the Orchard Street pilot project, which is a go. The date is October 13th. Um, Shoshana Marchand, who lives on Orchard Street, has for like over 20 years, is our chief liaison. And she has, um, she has opinions, <laughs> which I love her for. And so we um, presented her first with the idea of 10 ginkgos. She wanted to get some other trees in the mix, so that may happen. She'd also like to up the number if possible to 15. I have no idea where that we are with that. And then she'd also like trees on the other side in the underwire, and we said we don't have 
we just don't have small trees, and so that that would have to be postponed. We support the concept, but we. And so she's pulled together some volunteers. Um, I think it would probably, I can check in with her about, actually at this point, um, maybe it makes sense that I just hand Shoshana directly over to you all. My only role at this point will be to help her through the online application because even though it's pro forma, because we did hand pick this neighborhood based on a whole variety of reasons. One is they had a pot of money that they could offer toward the cost of the trees. We're not asking you to do that, but it was it was a nice thing. Um, and um, and so uh, we so they are a pilot and I want to walk her through the application just so that we can iron out any kinks, see if the application is impossible to fill out. It's a little, you know, it gets into some weeds. Um, and then um, but then I think at that point I can completely director to you guys. What's the maximum number of trees that you plan? Uh, that 15, plan? 15. 15 would be the maximum and you still are undecided on the, the ginkgos are definitely go with the other species, I'm not sure. So she, her last reply was she'd be happy with um, either the honey locust or the, are they American lupins? I wouldn't plant the American lupins. They're, they're just, too big. They're too big and they're actually not salt tolerant. Okay, okay, so then honey locusts. She was fine with it. Well, there are other kinds of lupins. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna I'm sending an email connecting you guys, and I'm gonna pull myself out. I'm gonna show up on planting day, and you're available. I am available. It's my old street. Part of another reason is that I used to live on the street, right? I've been waiting 15 years to see trees plant. You know, we we do have 12. We know and we know the plan. If there should be 15 trees in their stakes for 15 trees, will they get them done this fall on on October 13th or next spring? They depend on. Yeah. That's not specific. Or, or we will. Okay. We so, will fill the tree belt. Okay. On that side. So we can assure her. Well, I'm going to just let you right. two. But you can say her. We, you know, you can say button that part. We will fill the tree belt. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me on October 13th. The I don't know. What, do we normally do you normally do a nine o'clock? Is that what you normally yeah, eight, do? Eight. Oh, eight. 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 Um, okay, so that, um, do you have any questions about, now I feel like uh, I want to indulge you guys a little bit because you waited so patiently for this part of the agenda. Thank you. Oh, well, no, thank you. And actually, it's, everything that you've been doing here is quite impressive. So, as a representative of the public, um, it looks like great work. But uh, the only question that came up is when you talk about Orchard Street and it may relate ultimately to Prospect Street is that side prospect that we're on is under power. And uh, I'm just wondering is that, and I saw in here that there are certain trees that are geared towards that. There was a bridge originally we talked about to be sensitive to issues about salt. And so is that an issue that may delay our ability to do something? That we or you just don't have those trees available? No. No, I, I don't think so because if we have enough lead time, we can actually get trees either through grow bags or we can actually get them bare root trees. So bare root trees is a different growing method. They basically bring and we buy trees that actually don't have any balls or they're not any bags, and we get them from uh, a nursery in New York. They ship them to us. We plant them right several days after they're delivered. So the species availability and selection for underwire trees is a lot greater. So no, I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll be a problem uh, as long as we actually have the awarded neighborhood. Um, the neighborhood that's awarded needs to be done in the spring, so we can actually set up our fall planting. In other words, at some, at some point in the spring, mid spring to late spring, we need to award the neighborhood whoever applies. So I thought so I actually thought we were going to award them before January so that you can have that well, as part of the. We can. We can. I, I just I'm just using those. Yeah. yeah. We can do that. It's okay. fine. And that way, there we can actually con we can 
contract with the nursery to get the nursery stocked. If we have to use multiple sources, we'll have to use multiple sources. So it should be. So you're right. There's, it limits the trees because both salt and underwire it narrows down. Yeah. You have to look in there. You'll right. see in the book the symbols and, and it cuts down the number. No, oh, that's always impressive. I, I looked through that. But you had mentioned to me there were trees over, right behind the old park restaurant, up on uh, along the um, bike path there. Yes. What are they had a, a purplish leaf. Those them? those are choke uh, choke cherries. Choke choke cherries. Those those. Are No questions? No, I'm very in my, I'm like, I might have been sitting there. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, you guys are sitting there doing great job. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like to help out with that uh, kind of some trees too. Great, so, great, great. Well, put it on your calendar then. I mean, oh, if well. you're serious, uh, yeah. October 13th, 8 a.m., Orchard Street. Yeah. yeah. And regarding yeah. timing for the application, so yeah. if, for now, if the 2019 neighborhood planting is going to be awarded by the end of the year, then there's just a small window of once. Being awarded by the mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have a media blitz. Yeah. 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 We'll have a big media blitz. Yeah. yeah. All right. But just keep that in mind. The yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be prepared to yeah. work on it. And in the meantime, that gives me enough time to get the emails of our natives and to check with you. Yeah. yeah. And, so, uh, and, and just in, in terms of doing it, what I did was a prospect at Jackson's. Mm -hmm. uh, one person said, well, it's on the corner of row and so we're making down the road. But I haven't gone down those streets. So mm -hmm. just so much I guess I do. Yeah, no, I mean I think it's fine. That's it, appropriate it also, size. It also connects yeah. yes, it is an appropriate size. It also connects the other plantings that we started to do our first year on Prospect uh, Prospect Street which started across from the Y. Across from yeah. the YMCA from the synagogue going north towards Jackson Street. So we we stopped and so that would be I think very appropriate to continue going up the street because uh, there really uh, there are no public shade trees at all uh, on the other side of the street because all the trees belong to Child's Park. So, and are you looking for so when I speak to people uh, in, in, on Orchard Street, you said they had um, mainly eco trees, but is it a variety that you look for, or is there some kind of aesthetic uniformity also that we want? Uh, um, well, typically we like to use multiple species, and but uh, four or five species in a block, and then another four or five species, and then another four or five species. But again, as Rob alluded to, underwire salt tolerant trees are a little hard to, they're not hard to come by, you just have to have a lot of planning to get them, but it does really narrow the type of trees that are available. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So piece you. of information if you're interested in just planting. Um, tree Northampton, we plant almost every weekend in the fall and the spring. So if you are interested in helping, yeah, I'll have to public service announcement. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we're not going to talk about those priority street zones. I'm just going to cut that from the agenda. We don't have time. Let's um, bump back up to Todd's planning of the plan. Uh, so I think uh, the other members of the ad hoc subcommittee presented the hopefully final plan of the plan uh, last meeting. I don't have it with me, but if there are any questions related to it, we're, I guess, all here and we can answer those questions or we can just take out a vote to it, adopt it. You sent the final version out, yeah. right? So everyone would have gotten an opportunity to review it. A couple of little typos, which I think, but it's not surprising. <laughs> just like it's little not substance. All right, so this is the point we move to, 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 to that we approve the plan of the plan. <laughs> Document. <laughs> the meta plan. <laughs> right. Can we call the meta plan? Sure. Yeah. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Best to be able to serve on the You want to abstain? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next topic, 
fall planting, and I just want to keep us in mind. Well, actually, we're we're back on schedule, so we're doing okay. Fall planting, rich and raw. Uh, we have got enough stock in hand to get setback trees when the um, prairie trees could sort of reach our goal, and we pretty much identified all the places the trees are going, except to the extent that Ridge is worth the setback. So, just, so, so it's kind of the fall plan, kind of, uh, we're just doing as many trees as we can plant. And we, know, we know we're planting, we have the stock. And it, so the season's kind of ready to close out already. We still have another <coughs> almost two months, but um, the planning part is real good. The trees are at hand, although I haven't heard that in the uh, No, uh, we're, we're trying to get 25 bare root trees yeah. to actually uh, assist in the bridge to finalize the bridge tree planting, which would be a fun historic enhancement. So our goal would be of all the priorities to finish bridge street uh, and then we're going to be working aggressively on bridge road but we're probably going to have to go back to bridge road again but we're, we're going back to bridge road like next week correct right and bridge street so we're right yes. we we're bridge back street back and forth we did we plan an bridge road this past weekend um, but we're uh by coming out in orchard street and uh bridge road bridge street uh we still we're, we're kind of coming to We've done a lot of trees. A lot of our plants. By the end of this weekend, we'll be 100 trees for that year. So, Rich has about 20 setback possibilities. So, that's about 200 at working streets. And so, we're getting down to. We're, good. we're, close. we're closing in the 250 very quick. Right, we're closing in on our committed tree planting. Like committed spaces. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Closing in And also, I. I want to add that having this routine of having regular planting days, which we've never actually had. So Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, adding Sunday has been a big, even though it's only right now two trees, spreads it out and, and allows us to, without stressing hopefully in the individual so much, to plant and then the trees that we want to plant. That's really good. Lovely. And, and I, I, I want to encourage that have these little pods. People can contain the uh, pods of planters, little groups. Mm -hmm. and, and those groups are constantly changing. People should be trying to bring more people in all the time. It's not like we have like a set group. Mm -hmm. no. there's, there's space for. We need more volunteers. If you need yeah. more volunteers, um, send me language and I'll put it out on my South Street listserv again. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm always yeah. happy to do that. And yeah. Round Hill listserv. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to have you know, more, but at the same time, having this base. Of yeah. a, a Wednesday group, right, Saturday right, group, right. and Sunday group allows it to happen. Okay. Right. Tree Northampton update. All right. It really is yeah. very much overlapped with Rich and Rob. Thanks, Rich, for being out there with us. It's really tremendous. And Jen, um, in addition to Rob having people who really can identify what needs to be done with the fall, apparently especially is a really good thing. We have a lot of volunteers. We have some regulars. This Saturday is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have a bunch of STEM college students with us, which um, should be fun. Looks like we're going to have them at Sheldon Field because it's a rather safe place. Um, we can discuss it more with Rob and Rich, exactly who's going where. Um, two sites. And um, so it's... We've had, we've had wonderful volunteers. We have some people who seem to be signing up for every Saturday, a couple people, luckily, and then three strong people. And then we've had others who, um, you know, have done it over the years, and they can do one or two Saturdays. So um, thanks, everybody, who's been helping. And again, to Lily for this Sunday. For oh, sure. And Marilyn and Molly. And Marilyn and Molly. Thank you very much. It's great to have That's everybody awesome. out there. And. Um, Getting ready for just getting through the fall here. It's pretty busy. And, uh, that's we have an end of season great. volunteer appreciation event. Yes, Marilyn, you're going to make it. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that when we were planting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. Ladders and lasagna. <laughs> 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 Talked about 
Okay, no, Camden, but we've talked about that all along. And there's, um, we know that some of the people probably, you know, they just really want to plant trees, the ones in group especially. So it would be nice, I think it would be very nice if we had a tea thing or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd we be able to treat our Camden. To try to pull it together. Yeah. And I know Susan Roy would be fine on with that. She could get us a place. You could even just have a potluck at someone's house, and that would be, oh, but you know, <coughs> less party organizing and, yeah. and just. That's true. Simple. Or a what? It's a party of Joe's, and they then they volunteer someone have to bring something. What's a party of Joe's? A pizza party, party of Joe's. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 Then the then the volunteers don't have to bring yeah. something. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. Or yeah. 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 Yeah.
and they just reached the parking lot and we can leave the plane. And also, check in with you about the dad. Yeah, thanks. And um, I'm going to be tossing Shoshana your way, mm -hmm. so be ready to catch up all. So um, I'll go to the, um, on the 25th, to the comment. Uh, and solicit a comment from Todd, or are you going to go to that as well? And on trees on the King Street, 25 Yeah, I think I'll just sit, you know, I think on the bulleted project overview, it just needs to reference the fact that they look like they're planning almost 30 trees. But so as a community member, I would ask for Yeah. Is this, this that is that a zoning meeting, right? No. That's not, that's oh, a 25% that's that's a a design oh, for King right. Street. So that's right. Yeah. yeah, so just state the obvious, which is there are trees on there. Can you put that into writing? That there are trees in the plant. It, it, it's completely possible that in the past there would end up being no trees. trees oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't assume anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the Main Street RFP is on the street. Isn't, it? Isn't the Main Street redesign RFP on the street? Yes. And um, I've been emailing, I thought I included everyone in the volunteer emails, but I'll make sure that you guys are on it so you can spread it through your neighborhoods so we can continue to get new faces involved. And planning. I'm uh, still working on that. Uh, trying to make a single sheet to put in the planting uh, manual about nursery stock recommendations. And um, I'm going to touch base with Rich about the uh, seed and soil stuff, um, and uh, which kind of includes going up to Florence and looking at the. Um, Pit, how many do we have to take out? Which I can do that. We don't need to communicate something or to the three of us who are trying yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. some kind of like who guy, what it is we're trying to do, yep. how much it costs, yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Try to get you a, a cost and put a fine from uh, a Pleasant Street contract. It's going to be a cost to say that there's a couple of trees. Hopefully and then so I will do the application, but it would be nice if one of you can send mm -hmm. the standards of. Um, volume standards. Yep, I can in relation do that. to trees. I can do that. It's actually, so it's actually I know that that, uh, that CU soil document that's produced yeah. by Cornell. Yeah. I've probably yes. seen it, but, uh, but I can I can tell you it's pretty simple. That, it's yeah. a simple yeah, exactly. Uh, but at least that I'll be using one we all agree. And a tree list. I can give you a tree list of the ones that will grow. Right. right. So, right. Yeah. I, I, I you can send me the list because you're thinking about this. So. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do that and then. Um, I can be a consultant to the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. You'll be a consultant, then I'll do the yeah. footwork. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, I'm working. I'm still. I haven't done any since last time, but I have on my list to do is still to think of more um, community gathering places to add to the list of. Mm. That's one of the categories of places that we want to plan. So I'm still brainstorming that. Um, I'm going on October 2nd to the planning meeting. Great. And I have on my calendar October 2nd tree planting workshop in yeah. Florence. Yeah. What, um, I forget what the deal is with that. Yeah, was that Rich Harper? Well. Yes. Oh, what different that? time? time early morning? It's, it's daytime. Oh, okay. good. But, but who's doing that? And you, so it's going to be put on by the Mass Tree Wardens and Forestry Association. Um, it's a professional development series. Um, Open to all members of the Tree Warden Forest Association. I do not know how many seats there are. I can find out mm -hmm. if there's anyone interested. It's an all day thing? It is an all day thing, but I'll be truthful with you. If, you, if any one of you want to attend, it would be great. But I think all of us at this table who have planted have a really good understanding, yeah. and I, I don't think that there is. Redundant. It's going to be kind of redundant because mm -hmm. we are following the recommended practices for okay. the yeah. I've never been to one. This is the second or third one that held, so I think I'll, I'll go for the host community. Um, and I've made arrangements to the location. So, but I, I will find out if I will send you an email if there are any available spaces if anyone's interested. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt. I mean, every time I go to one of these things, I'll like Can members of the public go? Or is it just your fee? No, you, you, can, you have to sign up for it. It costs, what, I forget what it is, 45 bucks or something. Might be, might be more for non members. I can't remember. Okay, done. Thank you. Um, 
I have all kinds of stuff to do. I've got to email the mayor in regards to our um, grant, uh, our, uh, intent to apply for the grant. I also have to email David Pomeranz to get his take uh, on uh, the, uh, the able to plant trees in this parking lot uh, and get his approval, which I don't think will have an issue. Um, I have to get the structural soil uh, cost. You wanted to talk to me about volcano mulching, so we can do that after Oh yeah, one yeah. yes, one thing, volcano mulching. So okay. <laughs> they took the volcano mulch away in front of Cold Best property, right? I was all excited. I went over there and took pictures. I, I emailed the guy, the gentleman, and said, you know, we need to come back for some roof room. It was great. The next day I drove down there, the so volcano back. mulch is back. Oh. 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 So, oh. so I made an inroad and it, something happened. So now, I, I, now, I, now I have to go oh, back and it. actually, I have thinking? to go meet with someone who does their landscaping to explain to them how it's done. There's no license. Yes. The same company? To be honest with you, every time I, every time I go by there, there's no one there. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. All right. Yes, we need yeah. to. So that's something Trey Northampton would like to honor the volcano mulching group and to bring as a dual role of raising public awareness of volcano mulching. Yeah. And just to honor so what they've done. So they leave it off for more than a couple days. Yeah. Well, I'm mean, at the yeah. hospital yeah. hill people. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay, oh, I so I'm the last one up here. Um, I have been working very intensely with Marilyn and, and Rob uh, and Rich on the um, on the intent to apply. Um, Going to be connecting Shoshana with Sue and Rob. Um, I'm going to try to attend one of these meetings, probably the one on the second. Um, of the, uh, so far, I didn't hear anyone able to go to the Florence downtown. Room. Is that also that's, more of a that's zone? not until October 30th? Correct. So we can we can revisit. Report on that. Oh, I'm going to send a South Street lister of anything Sue sends me, and I'm also going to send anything Rich sends me about the tree removal and the flood area. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.